Uh, I wanted to make a live presentation of the website that we created in the frames of two projects that we uh, were realizing in the last five years. But un unfortunately, it's impossible due to some technical issues. I can only show the slides, so please believe me that everything works, works perfect. <laughs> they are beautiful, <laughs> and we've done everything we promised. But what were the, uh, what kind of projects were that? So. Uh, the Chopin Institute were granted with two huge European grants. Uh, one uh, was devoted to the Chopin heritage and the other to Polish music heritage. Both were called Heritage and Open Access. In the frames of the first project that we are realizing since 2017 until 2021, we digitized more than 40,000 objects from our own collection. Mm, and, of course, everything that was digitized is already online, so you can browse that uh, and uh, browse all, almost all collections of the Chopin Institute, which is, as you probably know, the biggest Chopin collection in the world. Uh, but we not only digitized... Uh, uh, we not only digitized the objects to show the scans of original manuscripts as well as prints and so on, but we also uh, wanted to achieve more important goal in our, which was more important in our opinion, which was encoding the whole Chopin uh, heritage, uh, compositions I mean, uh, into the digital um, format. We used for that humdrum format, which was developed by David Haron in the 80s at Ohio State University, but now is developed at Stanford University. It's, it's a plain text format for transcribing music. And we use Verovio, which is a very good and very fast uh, render, uh, render machine for uh, rendering scores from this kind of format. So as you probably also know, Lauren is an author of Verovio. <laughs> Basing on humdrum format, we, are, we were also able to encode every single Chopin composition in at least two or three uh, source versions. Because as you know, Chopin used to change his own minds from time to time, and there are also differences between different types of uh, early editions, like especially between German and French editions of Chopin's music, so now we created a system that automatically compares both these versions and visualizes the differences, which is, uh, I think, very important and very useful tool for sh especially Chopin scholars, but not only, for everyone who's interested in, let's say, playing music and want to show the, uh, uh, know the differences between uh, different sources. Of course, all these scores are downloadable. The other project that we realized was called Polish Music Heritage and Open Access. We just finished it a uh, month ago, so we are really tired now. <laughs> it was something. <laughs> it was focused on Polish music uh, resources from 16th until 19th century. But we understand Polish very broadly. Well, I mean, we were focusing on Polish sources, not only Polish music. So everything that is kept in Polish, Polish archives, the main ones, is digitized. So it's not only boring Polish stuff. If you go there, there's a lot of German music, there's a lot of <laughs> Austrian <laughs> composers, you know, uh, Czech, Austrian, and so on and so forth. So uh, I really invite you to use the website. There, there was a link in the further part of my presentation. We digitized more than 26,000 objects, which are mainly manuscripts and prints. And we created more than 7,000 scores encoded in humdrum format. So to give you an impression of how much is that, uh, I would say that it's like, uh, I made a test using Verovio. Verovio is very fast. So I wrote a script to render every score to a page, like a page of paper, to create the PDFs. So it took some time, but it occurred, surprisingly even to me, that it's more than 70,000 single pages of music. So it's, I think it's quite an impressive outcome, given the fact that it took only three years. We were a group of, we had a group of encoders that we, um, that we, uh, 
uh, we learned them how to use Handram, how to encode music in Handram. My colleague, Jacek Iwaszko, is sitting there, was responsible for that work, so good for you, Jacek. <laughs> great job. Uh, and this is something really important, especially for Polish music sources, because uh, majority of these sources, especially 17th and 18th century sources, are uh, anonymous. So, uh, you know, transcribing all this music and creating a system that allows you to compare the scores automatically, to search for uh, musical phrases, but also for texts, uh, is really something when you want to um, look for uh, look for attribution. So we already have a huge successes in that because we found many, many authors that uh, were unknown before. It is something similar to playing an easy code uh, uh, in Muscat, but it is also something more because we encode no, not only in chipits, but we encode the whole scores. So every score that we encoded is ready, for example, for, uh, you can download it and you can, you can research it or you can you can play it, whatever you want. Uh, okay, let's go further because I don't want, uh, it makes no sense to show it without live presentations, so maybe I'll say, say a few words about those tools that we were integrating. Basically, they were mainly open source um, tools. We are basing on open source tools like, first of all, Fedora repository system, which is a great repository system for keeping digitized objects and keeping the versions of uh, digital objects also. So it's very important because every time you change anything, you can tr track back the, all the changes. And it also uses the IIIF server, IIIF server, which is very important for uh, connecting digital scores with uh, its original digital images, uh, scans. We also, of course, use Muscat for RISM metadata entry, as well as RISM Online API, which was developed uh, not so long ago by uh, Lauren and Andrew Hankinson, uh, which is a great tool, really great tool for people who want to automatically pull the data out of RISM and use it in its own database. Uh, actually, every uh, single change that is made in RISM is automatically transferred through the APA to our portal, which is very important because uh, especially in terms of not unique materials like prints. When someone, let's say, in Library of Congress finds some new information about this specific score, this specific uh, print, uh, they can enter that into the Muscat and it's already in our portal, if we have the copy of the specific source, of course. <coughs> We also use Verovio Handram Viewer, which is developed by Craig Sapp from Stanford, and uh, it's this, th this is this editor that I sh already showed you. And GitHub. GitHub is a great tool for uh, file version control and for keeping data as well as meta metadata. It's mainly used by the programmers, but we found it very useful for using in this kind of uh, digital project. Yeah, so this is very a hand run viewer, and there was, uh, believe me, there's a link to the live version here. Uh, and just a few words about the achievements, because uh, uh, we did, I think, a good job, not only uh, repeating one more time that we have more than 7,000 scores, but it's more than 10 million notes. <laughs> so uh, to imagine how much is that, you have to know that we, uh, we counted how many notes were written by Chopin in his lifetime because we encoded whole Chopin, so we know that. That's <laughs> one line of code to know how, how much he wrote. So he wrote less than one million notes. So in about 900,000 notes. <laughs> of course, I'm, uh, I'm talking about everything that, you know, survived. So we encoded more than 10 million notes in three years, which is, I think, quite impressive. But the most impressive thing is our input into RISM database, because a RISM uh, group in, uh, at the Chopin Institute was established in 2016, and we started basically from zero. We had nothing. And in this last five years, we are responsible for almost 40% of all Polish records that were ever created. 
So it's more than 30,000 records, so uh, it's, it's also something. And I think it's a good way also to support RISM because it's, as someone said, extremely, extremely effective in terms of costs because basically we can, for example, find money and find funding for entering the data like we did, but the, it's the database of RISM which is growing thanks to uh, such projects. The main goals for these projects was, or main, maybe the main goal is creating something like a big data database for Polish music, which will allow us to analyze this music, uh, which will allow to maybe promote a bit Polish music abroad, because there is still a problem with that. You have to understand that for 50 years, we were not able, for example, to work on church music, because, you know, under communist regime, it was something not very, they were not happy to, to see researchers working on sacred music. And you have, as I said, sacred music is the majority of what survived in Poland. So we still have a lot of work to do. And I think I already used my time. So thank you for your kind attention. And if you have any questions, I'm here to, ask, to answer it.